Turn your eyes, O God, our shield, and look on the face of your anointed one. One day within your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the book of Judges. The angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth in Ophrah that belonged to Josh, the Ambrazerite. While his son Gideon was beating out wheat in the wine press to save it from the Midianites, the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, The Lord is with you, O champion. Gideon said to him, My Lord, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are his wondrous deeds of which our fathers told us when they said, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? For now the Lord has abandoned us and has delivered us into the power of Midian. The Lord turned to him and said, Go with strength you have and save Israel from the power of Midian. It is I who send you. But Gideon answered him, Please, my Lord, how can I save Israel? My family is the lowliest in Manasseh, and I am the most insignificant in my father's house. I shall be with you, the Lord said to him, and you will cut down Gideon to the last man. Gideon answered him, If I find favor with you, Give me a sign that you are speaking with me. Do not depart from here, I pray you, until I come back to you and bring out my offering and set it before you. He answered, I will await your return. So Gideon went off and prepared a kid and a measure of flour in the form of unleavened cakes. Putting the meat in a basket and the broth in a pot, he brought them out to him under the tarabah and presented them. The angel of God said to him, Take the meat and the leavened cakes and lay them on this rock, then pour out the broth. When he had done so, the angel of the Lord stretched out the tip of the staff he held and touched the meat and unleavened cakes. Thereupon the fire came up from the rock that consumed the meat and unleavened cakes, and the angel of the Lord disappeared from sight. Gideon, now aware that it had been the angel of the Lord, said, Alas, Lord God, that I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. The Lord answered him, Be calm, do not fear, you shall not die. So Gideon built there an altar to the Lord, and called it Yahweh, Shalom. The word of the Lord. The Lord speaks of the peace of his people. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace to his people and to his faithful ones and to those who put, him in, put in him their hope. 
the Lord speaks of peace to his people. Kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield his increase. Justice shall walk before him, and salvation along the way of his steps. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, I say to you, it will be hard for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and said, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For, them, for men it, this is impossible, but for God all things are possible. Then Peter said to him in reply, We have given up everything and followed you. What will there be for us? Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, that you who have followed me in the new age, when the Son of Man is seated on his throne of glory, Will yourselves sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel? And everyone who has given up houses or brothers or sisters, or father or mother or children or lands, for the sake of my name, will receive a hundred times more, and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. There is a tradition in biblical theology that said that when Jesus was talking about the eye of the needle in today's gospel, he is alluding to this small gate that can be found on the wall of Jerusalem, which is referred to as the eye of the needle. So in Jerusalem, there is this main gate, which is open all throughout the day, and people come and go through this main gate, and even animals such as a camel can enter easily through this gate. But then when nighttime comes, this main gate will be closed, and it is this smaller gate on the wall of Jerusalem that will be open for those who are coming back to Jerusalem like sometime at night. Now this gate is so small that it will be very difficult for a camel to walk through it. Unless a camel falls on its knees and its baggages are removed from its back, and then it will crawl through, the, through this gate and it's able to enter into the gate. It is only when the camel falls on its knees with its baggage is removed that the camel can enter through this eye of the needle. And in alluding to this, Jesus was telling his disciples of the challenge that those who have possessions will have in being able to enter the kingdom of heaven. And this kind of shows us a connection to yesterday's gospel about the, the rich young man. That is only when one is willing to let go of his possessions, when one is willing to let go of what he has here on earth, can one, can one be able to enter into this eye or into this gate that leads into the kingdom of heaven? And when somebody is willing to do that, then somebody can find hope in being able to enter the kingdom of heaven. But Jesus takes this further by saying that it is not only those who have wealth and possession here on earth that may find this a challenge, but even anybody, even those who are poor, but if in their hearts their desire is to accumulate wealth here on earth, it will still be difficult for them to enter the kingdom of heaven. Because at the bottom line here is the intention of the heart. Where does the heart seek its treasure? If the heart seeks its treasure in heaven, then man is able to easily enter the gate. But if the heart seeks the treasure of the earth, then that becomes an obstacle for man to be able to enter the kingdom of heaven. It is not an easy task, but it is not impossible 
for those who are willing to let go of what they have here on earth, even the desires for earthly wealth, in order to go to the kingdom of heaven. So I think it bears reflection for all of us here this morning too, to look upon this in terms of our lives and our desires to get to heaven and to ask ourselves, what are the baggages that I have in my life that prevents me from entering this eye of the needle, this gate that leads to heaven? And if I find these baggages, and if I do have these baggages, do I have the willingness and the desire to let go of these for the sake of the kingdom of heaven? As brothers and sisters in Christ, we join voices in prayer to present these petitions to the Father. That all our shepherds may be guided by the Lord to remain strong in their vocation and in service to the household of God, we pray to the Lord. That those in leadership may be blessed with purity of heart and mind, we pray to the Lord. That those who have died in the light of faith may join the family of God in eternal life. We pray to the Lord. That our patroness Saint Genevieve of Paris will deliver our community from the devastation caused by this COVID-19 pandemic and intercede for those who are suffering in any way because of this virus. We pray to the Lord. That through the intercession of Our Lady of Prom Succor, we will be spared all loss of life and property during this hurricane season. We pray to the Lord. And in silence, let us offer our own intentions. We pray to the Lord. Merciful Father, we offer these prayers in gratitude and hope on behalf of your children through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, the duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, 
by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Shelton, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
To those joining us on social media, please pray with me an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conform to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. We will now begin our devotion to our Mother of Perpetual Help. Most Holy and Immaculate Virgin and our Mother Mary, you are our perpetual help, our refuge, and our hope. We come to you today. We thank God for all the graces received through your intercession. Mother of Perpetual Help, we promise to love you always and to do all we can to lead others to you. Mother of Perpetual Help, confident of your powerful influence with God, obtain for us these graces, the strength to overcome temptation, a perfect love for Jesus Christ, and a holy death, so that we will live with you and your Son for all eternity. 
let us pray to be open to God's word. Mother of perpetual help, you continually sought the meaning of God's words and actions in your life. As we listen to God's word, may the Holy Spirit enlighten our understanding and give us the courage to put his word into practice in our daily lives. Let us kneel to pray as a community of faith. Mary, all generations have called you blessed, and the Almighty has done great things for you. Mother of perpetual help, we call upon your most powerful name. Your very name inspires confidence and hope. May it always be on our lips, especially in time of temptation and at the hour of our death. Blessed Lady, help us whenever we call on you. Let us not be content with merely pronouncing your name. May our daily lives proclaim that you are our mother and our perpetual help. Let us pray for our temporal ones. Mother of perpetual help, with the greatest confidence we kneel before you. We implore your help in the problems of our daily lives. Trials and sorrows often depress us. Misfortunes and privations bring misery into our lives. Everywhere we meet the cross. Comforter of the afflicted, beg your son Jesus to strengthen us as we bear our burdens and to free us from our sufferings. Or if it be the will of God that you should suffer still longer, help us endure all with love and patience. May we follow the example of your son and through him, with him and in him, commend ourselves to the care of our heavenly father. Let us stand now to present our petitions and our thanks. Lord Jesus Christ, that a word from Mary, your mother, you change water into wine at Cana of Galilee. Listen now to the people of God, gathered here to honor our mother perpetual help. Grant our petitions and accept our sincere thanks. Grant wisdom and guidance to our Holy Father, Pope Francis, to our Bishop Shelton, our priests, and all the leaders of our nation, state, and community. Grant peace and unity throughout the world, especially in our homes and families. Grant that young people respond generously to the call of the Holy Spirit in deepening their faith and choosing their vocation in life. Grant us continued health of mind and body and help the sick to regain their health according to your holy will. Grant eternal rest to all our deceased and to the souls of all the faithful departed. Let us pause now to silently present our own petitions to our mother of perpetual health. Lord, accept our thanks for the new life of grace you gave us. Accept our thanks for all the graces received through the sacramental life of the church. Amen. Accept our thanks for the spiritual and material blessings we have received. Amen. And let us pause now to silently thank our mother perpetual help for our own favors received. Please kneel as we pray for the sick. Lord, look upon your servants laboring in their bodily weakness, cherish and revive the souls which ye have created, so that, purified by their sufferings, they may soon find themselves healed by your mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord Jesus Christ be with you that he may defend you, within you that he may sustain you, before you that he may lead you, behind you that he may protect you, above you that he may bless you, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us renew our confidence in Mary as a perpetual help. Mother of perpetual help, you have been blessed and favored by God. You became not only the mother of the Redeemer, but the mother of the Redeemed as well. We come to you today as your loving children. Watch over us and take care of us. As you held the child Jesus in your loving arms, so take us in your arms. Be a mother ready at every moment to help us. For God, who is mighty, has done great things for you, and his mercy is from age to age for those who love him. Greatest fear is that in time of temptation, we may fail to call out to you and become lost children. Intercede for us, dear Mother, in obtaining pardon for our sins, love for Jesus, final perseverance, 
and the grace always to call upon you, Mother of Perpetual Help. Let us stand now and unite with the Christians of all ages in praising Mary and in committing ourselves to her powerful protection. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, who gave us your mother Mary, whose image we venerate, as a mother ready at every moment to help us, grant, we beg you, that we who call on her help may always enjoy the fruit of your redemption. This we ask through you, who live and reign forever and ever. Prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing. Who reigns now with Christ our Redeemer and King? Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave Maria. In heaven, the blessed, your glory proclaim. On earth, be your children. Invoke your fair name. Ave, Ave, Ave. 